With profits being razor thin these days, fuel mileage has become an important factor in whether or not you're going to make any money at this job. Now some of these factors are beyond your control, such as the amount of wind you're going to be hitting, the terrain you're traveling in, the outside temperature, the fuel quality itself has become a problem these days. Those are factors beyond your control. But there are a few factors that are within your control. Of course, there's the speed that you travel, there's the amount of idling time that you get, and it, even the type of thing like the type of trailer that you're pulling will affect your fuel mileage. For instance, flatbeds and tankers get better fuel mileage than vans and reefers. Fuel foot pressure on the pedal. The old adage is, push down on the fuel pedal as if you've got an egg underneath the accelerator. So you'll ease on and off the fuel pedal and that will that will certainly help improve your fuel mileage. Now if you're driving a company truck there's not a whole lot else you can do. You can watch your idling time, monitor your idling time, you can watch the amount of pressure you put on the fuel pedal, easing it on and off as compared to thumping it up and down. But other than that, the company truck is a company spec. You can only drive the thing respectably and what you get is what you get when it comes to fuel mileage. For owner operators, it's a little bit differently if you're specking a truck. Now there are two schools of thought on this. The mega carriers, and they're always good to watch because they've spent money on research. The mega carriers will, will tend to spec a, a small uh, fuel squeezer engine, a very aerodynamic truck, usually an automatic transmission and super single tires for instance. Now this new spec comes with its own set of problems. The other way you can go if you're an owner operator, and a lot of guys are doing this and a lot of guys are having a great deal of success with it, is, is specking a bigger engine, a higher horsepower engine, a standard transmission like the old days, a low, low set of rear end gears, controlling their speed, idling along at 55, 65 miles an hour, but because it's a high horsepower engine, it's not really having to work too hard the transmission and lower rear ends mean that the RPMs are down, which means that you're burning less fuel. And the truck, because it's so much horsepower, really isn't having to work too hard. It's just kind of loafs along. It's not really working hard. You don't have to change gears very often in a setup like that. And every time you change gears, that eats fuel. So they're saving fuel mileage that way. They're just not pushing the pedal hardly at all. They're just rolling the truck up and down the highway. Now, no matter how you cut the mustard, the way the, f the wind breaks over the truck is going to affect your fuel mileage. Everywhere the wind catches the truck hurts you. So on this configuration, the regular style configuration, everything that catches the wind, the breathers catch the wind, the flat windshield, the stacks, and the top of the trailer all catch the wind. Even the axles, the rear axles back here, a spread axle combination will catch more wind than a tight tandem. So everything that hits the wind, of course, hurts your fuel mileage. But it hurts it a lot less at 60 miles an hour than it does at 70 miles an hour. So there's where your speed comes into play. You're better off just kind of loafing along and not racing along. And just in time freight is, is for the mega carriers anyway. So if you're an owner operator, you don't want to be racing along. It's hard on the equipment. It's hard on the fuel mileage. So you're saving fuel there. If you are an owner operator and you're thinking about buying a new truck, think through this carefully. There are a few issues here. Now don't be fooled by, by factory numbers claiming 10, 11 miles of the gallon. Those tests are not done in real world conditions. They're done at low speeds, usually 50 miles an hour. They're done on flat terrain with a tailwind, not pulling much weight because they want to advertise that the truck gets great fuel mileage. So they're setting the conditions, but they're not real world conditions. So don't be fooled by those numbers. In the real world, even the most aerodynamic trucks are gonna run in the eight mile to the gallon range. Whereas in a configuration like this, like the one I have, I can get over seven miles to the gallon with my configuration, just by, just by taking it easy, not driving the heck out of it. So if you're thinking about buying a new truck, think this through. You're, you're buying a truck that's got emissions equipment on it. They've had a lot of trouble with those. 
these slipper trucks have super singles. They've had problems with these as well because when you blow a tire on a super single, it just drops to the ground and chews the rim up. So you're not just buying a tire, you're buying a rim as well. So you're looking at $1,500 tires and rim plus the service call because you can't limp it into the tire shop. Or at least with a set of duels, one goes flat, you can still keep on going and get to the tire shop and you haven't lost a rim in the process. Whereas you've got an older configuration truck that you're going to have to spend a lot less money on, but it's a lot more reliable. That's the route I like to go. Now my truck here is an old configuration truck. I've got 355 rears, tall rubber, I run a flat top, and I pull a reefer trailer, and I was still, on good days, getting over seven miles to the gallon with it, just driving it conservatively. So, and it's paid for. In my opinion, I think your money in pocket to keep your older truck up to snuff, keep it repaired and keep working it, as to buy one of these new trucks. Yes, fuel mileage is an important factor when it comes to profit, but it's not the only factor. You've got to look at the overall cost of operating the vehicle. And people these days tend to discount the cost of DEF fluid in their fuel mileage figures. And that's not the case either. That's not true. You've got to calculate those costs in as well. And if the truck sucks DEF, that's coming out of your pocket if you're an owner operator. So take all these factors into consideration if you're thinking about buying a newer truck. Myself, I ran it through. I kept the old girl I've got and it does me just fine. That's my take on it. If you guys are getting good fuel mileage using other specs and different kinds of equipment, let me know what you're running. Let me know what's working for you. I've heard good things about the more aerodynamic trucks with the new Detroit engines. They're doing very well apparently on fuel mileage. So let me know what your experience has been. I'm interested and we can all learn. That aside, I was thinking about back in the day when I was trucking and I was remembering back in May of 1980, I was delivering in a little town in Alberta on the Montana border, pretty close, uh, Cardston, Alberta. You guys won't probably have ever heard of it, just a little cow town. But I was down there delivering in May of 1980. The weather was nice. It was, it was not t-shirt weather, but it was certainly, certainly sweatshirt weather. It was nice. I was outside the truck while they were offloading it. And it looked like it was snowing. But the weather was far too warm for that and I could not understand what was happening but the air was the air was filled with what looked like snow it covered my truck even I didn't understand what was going on at the time and when I got back up into where I had radio reception again I found out that Mount St. Helens has erupted and all this that I'm seeing that I think is snow has turned out to be ash from the volcano erupting and I'll never forget it it was it was a, a fascinating sight to watch all this ash just sprinkle down like snow. That's my story for today. Drive safe, and I'll see you on the back office.